Lesson 4.2, Multiples, and Multiply with 5 and 10. We can multiply with 5 as a factor and 10 as a factor. We can use skip counting, a number line, or a bar model to find products. So in a multiplication sentence like 5 times 2 is equal to 10, we've learned that this 5 is the number of equal groups, this is how many are in each group, and this is how many in all, the product, the answer. We've also learned that the 5 is a factor of the 10, the 2 is a factor of the 10, and now we're going to learn that this 10, this product, is a multiple of 5, and it's also a multiple of 2. A multiple of 5 is any product that has 5 as one of its factors. So this 10 is a multiple of 5, because there's a 5 as a factor. See? It's a multiple of 2 because it has 2 as a factor. Here we have the 5 times table going up to 10. We can see there's a 5 as a factor for all of them. We can see it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Each of these products are a multiple of 5 because there's a 5 as a factor. You can see that each of the products end with a 5 or a 0. See that? 5, 0, 5, 0. They all end with a 5 or a 0. A multiple of 10 is any product that has 10 as one of its factors. So again, we have 10 as a factor in all of these, and each of these products is a multiple of 10 because it has 10 as a factor. Every single product here is a multiple of 10 because it has 10 as a factor. Do you notice they all end with a 0? Do you see another pattern? 10 times 1, the product is a 1 with a 0. 10 times 2, the product is a 2 with a 0. 10 times 3 is a 3 with a 0. See? A multiple is a number that is the product of two counting numbers. So remember, counting numbers are whole numbers that can be used to count a set of objects, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Those are counting numbers. Those are whole numbers. And a multiple is the product of two counting numbers. Bob is making four toy banjos. He needs five strings for each banjo. How many strings does he need in all? Well, we can skip count by fives until we say four numbers. We need four numbers because there's four toy banjos and they each are getting five strings. We can skip count five. 10, 15, 20. 4 times 5 is equal to 20. So Bob needs 20 strings in all. Bob needs 5 strings for one toy banjo. If each string is 10 inches long, how many inches of string will he need for each banjo? He's going to need five groups of 10. We can use a number line to find how many inches of string Bob will need. We make five jumps for the five groups, and we skip count by 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And the numbers 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 are all multiples of 10. So Bob needs 50 inches of string for each toy banjo. We can use a bar model to find a product that has a 5 or a 10 as a factor, or any factor really. Emma bought three stickers and each sticker costs 10 cents. How much did the stickers cost in all? Well, one sticker costs 10 cents. We have three stickers, so we have three groups of 10. Three stickers would be three times 10 cents. Three times 10 is equal to 30. So our bar, bar model shows 10, 20, 30. And the stickers cost 30 cents in all. 
We can complete the bar model to solve. Emma bought five stickers that cost six cents each. How much did she spend? We look at the bar model they gave us and it's got one, two, three, four, five boxes. Well, our numbers are five stickers and six cents. If there's five boxes, then that's the five. That's the five groups. It's got five sections. We can put six cents into each of the sections. We have five groups of six. Five times six is equal to 30. So we know Emma spent 30 cents. We can use the pictures to find the unknown numbers. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven groups with five in each group. We have seven groups of five. We can skip count by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Seven times five is equal to 35. We can count groups of tally marks by skip counting by fives. Remember, for counting tally marks, we have four little vertical lines, and when we have the fifth one, we cross that group of four to make a group of five. We can skip count these by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. We have five groups of five. That's five times five, which is equal to 25. We can count groups of tally marks by putting two groups of five together to make a 10. Then we can count 10, 20, 30, 40. And we have four groups of 10. Four times 10 is equal to 40. In video 3.6, we learned that the commutative property of multiplication states that we can multiply in any order and we'll get the same product. If we have a bar model showing five groups of eight, that's five times eight, which is equal to 40. And if our bar model shows eight groups of five, eight times five is equal to 40. We get the same product, even though the factors are in different order. When our schoolwork asks us to make equal groups, we use the first factor in the multiplication sentence for those equal groups. When our schoolwork asks us how many are in each group, we use the second factor in a multiplication sentence. When we just need to find a product of a multiplication sentence, we can multiply in any order. The commutative property of multiplication said we can. Five times eight is equal to 40 and eight times five is equal to 40. 10 times three is equal to 30 and three times 10 is equal to 30. It doesn't matter the order, we're going to get the same product. It's different though, if your schoolwork is asking you to make equal groups, then you use the first number. If it's asking you how many are in each group, you use the second number. So remember, a multiple is just a product that has that number in the multiplication sentence. So 20 is a multiple of 10 because it's got a 10 in 10 times two. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.